I need to level. <gasps> Sneak attack. There it is. Okay. Mobility. Trickery. Persuasion. Oh, we got one more. Uh, and stealth. Yep. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ooh, a feat. Precise shot. You can shoot or throw ranged weapons at an opponent engaged in melee without taking the standard minus four penalty. Okay. Doink. Great. Let's see what we can do. Character Co has prepared the spell Raise Dead. Honey. Oh, because of this. Okay. Staunton. Oh, it's you. Good work back there in the Great Garrison. Name Staunton Vane. If you've heard rumors about me, just so you know, everything people say about me, it's true. What do people say about you? They say I'm a traitor, as bad as Arlu, Arlu Voresh. Sarconian who initiated the opening of the world wound and then made it expand. Oh, my. She's a super bad. That I'm a disgrace, even among the ranks of the condemned. The Queen Galfrey should never have spared me, and that I belong on the gallows. Why do they hate you so much? You really don't know. I'm the reason why the Crusade forces are holed up in the fortress on the edge of the world wound, instead of bringing the fight to the demons. We used to have a foothold in the wound, the mighty, unassailable city of Dresden. We used to have it until it fell, and all because of my stupidity. I gave the enemy our main citadel. I was tried. They wanted to execute me, and rightly so, but the Queen intervened. She said that I should live and fight in order to undo what I've done. So that's how I live, decade after decade, fighting in the condemned. As you can see, I, I have fixed nothing. And I have earned no one's forgiveness. Are you going to spit in my face too? It wouldn't surprise me. Hmm. Hmm. You keep living and fighting with no hope of anything better because that's what the queen ordered you to do. There's honor in that. You may be right, but you know, even stone and iron get worn down over time. I know what it means to live in a uh, regimented life, but I cannot rely on my discipline forever. I pray to Torag, though he does not listen, that my body breaks before my conscience does. How's it possible a whole city fell because of you? What do you mean, how? If you don't trust the word of a condemned, go ask somebody else, like my little brother, Joran. And if you still don't believe it, what's it to me? But if you're about to ask me to recount the story of my disgrace for the thousandth time, don't. <laughs> Fair point. We don't have any friends? Couldn't have survived this song if I was completely alone. Joran, my little brother, he keeps me going. He's never abandoned me. Everyone else shies away from me like they might catch what I've got. Even fighters in the condemned console themselves by thinking I've got stripped of my rank, but at least I'm not Staunton. Commander Tearblade seems to be the only person in the whole army who remembers that I'm a soldier, not a drudge. She has no qualms about taking me into battle. She had some mud flung at her in the past, or so I hear. That's why she tries to keep an open mind about people. It's no surprise that she's the only one to hold on to her sense of reason in this farce. So many years in the condemned, surely you've paid your penance by now. That's not up for me to decide. My life is in the queen's hands. The condemned isn't the worst part. The condemned are a military unit made up of petty criminals conscripted as disposable soldiers. All these years I prayed to Torag for forgiveness. Countless times I've gone to his priest. Countless times I've kneeled before his altar. If only the father of Dwarvenkind would answer my prayers just once. Not to restore what I've lost, but just to tell me what I'm, that I'm still one of his children. But it seems he doesn't give a damn about me. What can I expect from mere mortals when my own god doesn't think I deserve redemption? Hmm. I need to talk to the elf who calls himself the Storyteller. Strange old fellow, that one. He used to sit with me for hours, asking about all sorts of things. He never offered judgment or comfort. He just listened. At first, I wanted him and his questions as far away from me as possible. Later, I realized that talking to him did ease my burden a little bit. I hope he's alive and well. He's completely blind and feeble too. So if he's alone in the city, well, you probably know what that means. I do you know one place he might be? Look for him in the Black Wing. It's a library. Here, I'll show you where it is in the map. I don't know what use a library is to an old blind elf, but he loved the place. He would sit there day and night. All right, man. Good stuff there. Greetings, says Camellia. Tell me about yourself. Want to know more about me than you already do? Why? She arches a dainty brow. 
I talk to the spirits of this tormented land and they guide me in battle. I'll help you fight the demons and I swear to you can rely on me in this matter. Isn't that sufficient? Where'd you learn to wield a sword so well? I had good teachers, although they don't get all the credit. I'm a most diligent student. She licks her parched lips. Your amulet is quite unusual. Where'd you get it? Ah, my little trinket. It's so nice of you to notice, but I assure you this amulet is nothing but a bauble. Can a lady not be drawn to beautiful, useless things? Anyway, as much as I enjoy, and I enjoy our delightful conversations, the spirits are calling me and I must respond. Please excuse me. Your speech tells me you're of noble birth. You're most insightful. A fine quality to have. Oh, Lord. Oh. Hmm. Should we hit on her? We could totally hit on her. Forgive me if my questions disturb you. I couldn't resist such a noble and beautiful lady. I will stop bothering you immediately if talking to me upsets you. Not at all. Our conversation is an exquisite delight. Nice. Okay. Save. Oh, what's up, dude? You can pay me now. Ah! Here, take this. Yes, it's 2,000 coins. Take your payment and remember that Horace Squirm always keeps his word. You helped me get back to the surface and I duly paid you for escorting me. Now, speaking of our future cooperation, I have a job that would be perfect for someone like you. Naturally, I'll pay generously for your service. What do you mean for someone like me? For an adventurer ready to sell their soul for booze and then lie down drunk in the gutter. Oh. That, that is me. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's pretty cool. All right. Um... Or Horgus seems like one of those people who think the entire world owes them something. However, you hear notes of hysteria beneath his smug arrogance. Hmm. What does the job involve? Oh, let me see here. You seem a reliable enough ally to take to me and did get me out of the Mongol cave. So why should I care about what to do with my money once you've got it? Oh, wow. Okay. Noble Bert doesn't give you the right to behave badly. I would ask that you refrain from such statements in the future. Oh, really? How impudent. No one dares tell Horace Worm how to address the rabble. <laughs> so what does this job involve? You shall be my bodyguard. See, I have good reason to return to my mansion here in Canabras. I still have, well, it doesn't matter. It's none of your business. My mansion is a breathtaking building with a large garden in the wealthy part of the city. Even before the demons attacked every thief and fraudster in the city had tried to get inside one way or another, I shudder to imagine the state it's in now. I have little hope that my guards were able to hold the mansion during the attack, and I expect the servants fled when they saw the demons. Only Abadar knows... What's happened there since. Therefore, I would ask if you meet me at my mansion and guard me there until I complete my business. What kind of reward are we talking about? Also, please do take Camellia with you. You trust her because she's noble. Nice. A thousand gold coins. Double the reward and I'll think about it. Ah! Nope. Nope. I decline. Nope. Achoo! Ginger Andrew, awesome! You're starting your own Pathfinder playthrough? Fantastic. Very cool, buddy. Achoo! I sneezed again. Man, I tell you, it's tough. It's tough having such a such a terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, just, just, oh, the, the allergies. For those who don't know, I'm allergic to bad, fail uh, to, to failed skill checks. It's, it's terrible. I really need to get it looked at, really. Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay. Oh. Damn lotness monster. Hey, thanks for claiming that chat, love. I appreciate it. Just go with it? Yeah, I will. All right. Damn. That's a bad roll. Especially with... Dude, I have plus nine. I rolled a one? Okay. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll fail it, but not with a one. That's unacceptable. If I'm going to fail it, I'm going to fail it with gusto. Okay. I mean, come on now. Watch it be a two. I'm going to fail with a two. You ready? 
Here we go. Oh, look, I succeeded. That's great. Deal. Okay. Awesome. Man, that's crazy. I can't believe we actually first tried that. Beautiful. Ooh, that music. Who is Jernog? I'm sorry. Applause, please. A young man in well-worn traveling clothes as a simple wooden symbol of Aristil on his chest is efficiently cutting a linen robe into strips to use as bandages. Are you one of the Crusaders? Thank you for defending those of us whose talents lie off the battlefield. I'm Jernog, servant of Aristil, pleased to meet you. So your brother in faith? You haven't picked the best time to come here. I believe in fate and I wound up here in this place and at this time. I believe it's for a reason. Perhaps old Deadeye brought me here so I could help a little, so I could heal at least a handful of the wounded. Or maybe before I start my service in a quiet little village somewhere, he wanted me to see with my own two eyes what terrible evil exists in this world and the brave crusaders who protect us from it. What are you doing? I only took my holy orders recently, so my god has only bestowed a little of his power upon me as of yet. I'm sorry to say that the number of wounded fighters in this tavern is far beyond my power to heal, but there's a reason people say, have faith in the gods, but look to yourself first. I may not be able to help the wounded with magic, but I can at least cut up bandages. Nice. You from around here? Nope, oh, was just passing through Canabras. I was sailing down uh, that old man of ours, the Green Selen River, to a village by the name of Chili Creek. I happened to land in the city on the eve of the festival, and I'm ashamed to say I decided to stay for a day to enjoy myself, but I ended up staying in the city longer than I'd bargained for. Where's Chili Creek? Small fishing village. It's not even marked on some maps, but people do live there. What they don't have is a priest and they and have no one to heal their wounds, no one to offer prayers for a good catch, no one to give their dead a dignified burial, and the world wound is a stone's throw away, so I'll be setting sail for Chili Creek to serve my god and my people. Hey, we got we got the place. You should come and visit me sometime. Okay. Aren't you a young and experienced cleric afraid to go to the border of the world wound? I won't lie. I am afraid, but what can I do? Those villagers are simple people. Every day of their short lives is spent doing hard, honest work. It's exactly the kind of life I want. Something simple but meaningful. If I had centuries ahead of me, like elves do, I might have spared some 50 years or so to travel around the world. Maybe a hundred. Why not? But I don't have time to spare, so I want to spend my short life in a place where I'm needed most, even if it's dangerous. Especially if it's dangerous. I could use the help of a cleric. Aristotle knows I'd be glad to help you, but it's of no use. My spells are depleted and I have no training in potions or scrolls. See this robe I'm cutting up for bandages? It's the second to last one. Huh. Let's see what we can do. A tall, fragile-looking elf sits in front of you, eyes closed. He's as pale as a ghost, his arm wrapped in a blood-stained bandage. You spot other bandages on his body under his clothes, but even in such a miserable state, he manages to keep calm. I am Forn Autumn Hayes at your service. You need help? After giving you a cold, intense look, he shakes his head. Do not trouble yourself on my behalf. A local healer tended to me. Besides, I come from a resilient, hardy people. My body will endure both the wounds and the poison delivered through them. Who are you? Born Autumn Haze. I come here from Kionin. Because I am a hunter, and all minions of evil are my quarry. I won't say more than that, if you don't mind. Interesting. He sounds like a deliverer. Who wanted you? A sinner and an accomplice to demons. The quarry I'm hunting in this inhos inhospitable place. I'm cool, you can trust me. I might be able to help you. It would be impolite to refuse such a direct and friendly offer. What's, who is your quarry here in Mendev? I was hunting a fugitive, a Descarite by the name of Kailessa. It pains me to admit that there are heinous, heinous malefactors such as her among my noble kind. Hey, Zretch, what's up, buddy? I managed to catch up to her in Canabras, and I wounded her. Then demons appeared in the city and was engulfed in flames. I was injured in the battle that ensued and couldn't free her soul from its service to her dark master. Sorry for your misfortune. I hope things will turn out differently next time. There's no need for pity. Our ancient kind is blessed with great longevity. We gain a deeper understanding of the world than other races, and we learn our lessons better than anyone else. That goes for learning our from our mistakes as well. I survived, which means I'll be more prepared the next time we meet. I want to help you. Oh, damn. I can't pass that check. I thank you, but this is my mission, and I'm used to facing all manners of terrors on my own. I do appreciate your willingness to help. If you happen to meet Kailessa, take caution. She had turned many innocent souls to the path of evil, and darkness has rewarded her with many gifts. Her appearance alone will tell you that it is warped. The gate skin, malicious stare of her blood-red eyes, the bestial teeth, 
He's more monster than elf at this point. Oh, man. Okay. Um, can I do that check again? Oh, no. Hmm. Why do you choose to be a hunter of evil? Because I'm the son of a noble and proud nation. Fair. Okay, we're going to save this. Hold on, I have to go. Save it. I don't think there's any way we can do this. Yeah. Okay. Even if we got a 20, I don't think... Is a 20 a guaranteed success? I don't think so. So I'm going to I'm going to save that. Remind me don't don't let me forget guys. I'm going to save that that for later. Once we get like a little bit more I'm going to scum the f out of that. It's going to be awesome. Uh okay. So, uh can we talk to you? Beautiful. It's down here. Oh, there was something up there. Mhm. Mm Ooh. Cool. Can we talk to this guy? Lore religion check passed. The medallion you're wearing, that's a sacred symbol, isn't it? Are you a cleric of Caden Kalin? I'm a tavern keeper, best in the city, the best there ever has been, and I pray to the best god there is. Gained one experience point. Nice. Who are you? Gemmel Hawk's vampire. Oh. Are you really a vampire? No. <laughs> How'd you end up in, uh, in the Crusader City? <laughs> How did anyone end up here? How did you or them? The world is big, but there still isn't a place for everyone. People who no longer have a life anywhere else, they end up here. Any news? There are demons everywhere. And you showed up. This guy's talkative, isn't he? Yeah. You know what? You're right. That's actually a really good point. Let's Let's start it right now, chat. Let's start it right now. Uh, we're going to call this uh, Pathfinder WTR Notes. I think we're I think we're going to need a notes file for this game. Yep. Okay. Um. Twenty six. What was it? It was uh, World Knowledge. Okay. Yep, yeah, we're, we're gonna need that. Co notes. Any place in the city worth visiting? If you mean places that normal people usually stay well away from, then there are plenty, like the Pataxian wine, wine cellar. Ooh. Once belonged to a Pataxian trading house, then King Irovedi came to power in Pitax and properly started changing hands. Property. Soon after, the seller's shop assistant was found in a ditch. Not all of them mine, just his head. The American gangsters had taken possess possession of the place. They wanted to sell something stronger than wine on the street, and they ended up on the gallows. Then King Irovedi numbers, uh, then King Irovedi's number was up. So now the store stands empty and unclaimed. People say that a headless ghost wanders the place at night, moaning ghoulishly. Oh, nice. Just don't ask me how he makes any noise with no head. I wasn't there. I just tell it like I heard it. I see, you're not one for talking. <laughs> and then he doesn't say anything. Nice, perfect. Uh, okay, bulk sell. Oh, yes. That is what I'm talking about. Can I, um, what do you have? Oh, he's got fire. Nice. Gloves of the Neophyte. Dark Veil. What? Once per day, you may use this item to grant your party total concealment against range attacks for a minute? Oh, bag of holding. Find it. Dark Omen. Potion of a line weapon? Interesting. Spicy pastry. Ooh, spicy. 
Um, holy water. Oh my god, there's so many good items. Oh wow, these are expensive as hell. I didn't realize that. Okay, that's all the stuff I sold. Great. Did I just instantly get like mine? I did. Oh, that's awesome. Bag of holding for the win. Is this going to be the cozy stream too? Um, yes, it is. Yeah, I'm going to do this tonight for the cozy stream. I need to get to a point where like, we need to figure out, we need to get to a point where we can do like side stuff though. If I, if I, if I play the game and I can't get to a point where we can do side stuff. Let's see what we can do. Then no, I'll play something else for the cozy game. But if we have side stuff we can do, then we'll do that. I'm going to keep all main story stuff to the day stream. I believe the help is on the way. There's land. What's up, dude? Here for a chat. I've been waiting for you to come and see what strange beasts you've taken into your party. I'd like to know more about you. Let me guess. Your first question is, can you wear a hat with your one horn? Am I right? So can you wear a hat with your one horn? Sure I can. But certain designs don't suit me too well. And speaks in a deadly serious voice. <laughs> uh, you speak common much better than the rest of your tribe. Funny enough, common isn't all that common underground, but your observation is correct. I used to live on the surface with my parents for a while and had a chance to learn a couple things. The language and the fact that every peasant who sees my scaly mug screams, DEMON! And runs away. Oh. I don't know if you're interested, but my mom wasn't from an underground tribe. She was a smuggler, the kind that used the dungeons of Kenebris to slowly, to secretly move and store goods. One time, two gangs couldn't agree on how to share a prime cut, got into a fight, and the winner threw the losers down the hole, dead and living alike. My dad went to check if the corpses held anything useful on them, and he found a girl from the surface, barely clinging to life. An incredible feeling sparked between them. Or maybe the girl just liked men with scales and a cat nose. Eh, that might be it. One way or another, he got her back on her feet, and he even later left his home caves. She left her smiling behind, and they began an honest life together. Or smug she left her smuggling behind, excuse me. That's the delightful story of how old land came into the world. The next chapter, however, my family and I never stayed in one place for long. We lived sometimes on the surface, sometimes underground. We couldn't find a place to call home. Living in the caves was hard on my mom, and my dad's appearance raised too many questions in Mendev. They're at war against the demons, after all. In the end, my parents decided to stop making each other miserable and separated. My father and I returned to our tribe. I think the peasant screaming demon had something to do with it. Or maybe dad just couldn't stand life without rat tail soup. I wouldn't rule out that possibility. Wow. Did you come with me just so you can see the surface again? I... No, that wasn't it. I just don't have much patience for certain types of creatures. Demons, I mean. If they want to destroy Cannabis, I'll be on the side of people they're attacking. Land, you're my companion, and my companions should trust each other. I'm counting on you to give me honest answers, not excuses. I guess you're right. I shouldn't have been so evasive. It's just that some things are hard to talk about. My family, for example. Wow. Interesting. My birth hell take me turned out to be a great misfortune for my parents, all because I'm relatively healthy. I'm the best thing that can come from a marriage between a cave-dwelling mongrel and someone, anyone from the surface. A healthy child with the right number of hands and feet, no apparent defects, no missing organs or other problems. They saw hope in me, so risked having more children. They thought it would somehow be alright. Uh-oh. I could have had four brothers. The first was born two years after me and died three years later. He didn't have a nose, nothing even remotely resembling one. He could only breathe through his mouth. Mom and Dad were afraid to take their eyes off him for fear he'd choke or suffocate on something. But in the end, it was his weak heart that killed him. Then there was another pregnancy and birth. I pretended I was sleeping, but snuck out of my bedroom and listened to the door. All those hours, it was very strange, but I never heard the newborn screaming. My mom moaning, yes, the priest praying. Then I dared to open the door a little and look inside. The priest stood there very pale. One of them was holding something, a small object, one of them was holding something, a small object that fit in his palm. He asked, do you know what this is? And the other said, I think it's a head. Oh, God. You don't have to keep going if it hurts you. Hell no, I started to tell you, and I'll make it to the end. You want to know why I followed you to the surface? Well, here's the reason. It turned out that this time, Mom was expecting triplets. The first of the babies was born in pieces. And the two others didn't live long enough to draw their first breath. About three weeks later, my father took me to the caves. He didn't want to leave. I could see it in his face, but I think my mom and he decided it together. The curse my people have carried since the first crusade stood between them, not to mention the four dead babies. And old age was rapidly taking its toll on my father. After we returned to the cave, he only lived another four years. So if you're asking me why I decided to go up with you to the surface and join the crusades, well, the answer is I've always wanted to. 
I was afraid to leave my tribe, but it always haunted me that I'd die in a world where four crusades could do nothing to stop the beast from the abyss, and the number of victims kept growing. I want to change that, or at least try to. And if changing things is too much to ask, then at least get a little revenge. The ones who are behind the war world wound owe me a great debt. The lives of four brothers, all my mother's tears, my father's broken heart. It's a lot. It's so much that killing a couple demons won't do it for me. I want to do something real and I'm ready to pay any price. Call it my personal crusade if you like. Then gives you a slanted grin. I used to think that things could be better if I'd never been born, but now I think I was born for this, to settle the score. Wow. Wow. I'm very sorry. Well, then I'm very lucky. I met someone who not only helped me choose the right path, but is happy to listen to my whining. Why didn't you join the Crusades before? I couldn't abandon my tribe. Yep. Uh, would you like to find your mother? No. The word flies from Land's mouth faster than an arrow. Then after a pause, he continues. I don't want to meet her. Not because I feel any resentment. It's just that she's a half-elf. She barely, she's barely got her first gray hair, and I'll be a ramshackle old man. She's buried enough children. There's no need to make her witness the death of another one. I hope you understand. Damn. What happens if you find someone you love? And break my beloved's heart when I die in her arms five years later? It's a fine thing to do to the person you love. Then again, there's a chance I'll inspire some tragic bard to write a tearful ballad. Thanks for sharing, dude. Mongols have short lifespans, but you don't look like you're getting older dying. How are you? How old are you? I'm as old as I look, no surprises there, but remember Sul? He's 10 years older than me. I remember him back when he was a fearless warrior, and day by day I watched him turn into an old man, him and my father. It happens very quickly. First you miss a shot because you don't see the target as clearly as you used to. You think it's because your eyes are tired. You tell yourself it'll get better tomorrow. Then you notice you're having trouble breathing. The climbing is harder than before. Your fingers stop bending. You have to tie your sword to your hand. You can't even put on your greaves without help. When you're washing your face in a stream, sometimes you catch a sight of a gray-haired, wrinkled old man you don't recognize, and this goes on until one day you come across a cave beast and you realize you can't outrun it. Woo! Damn, dude! My dad kept diaries, marking all the signs, and I saw it too. The last year, I had to help him get out of bed, help him dress, remind him to eat. Sometimes he forgot my name. I told him that we should have stayed on the surface, and he joked that dodging a goddess was behavior unworthy of a crusader. He meant phrasma. Every morning I wake up and check how I feel, but there are no signs yet. Even so, I know I don't have much time. I need to do something useful before I forget why I came here. Damn. Tell me about Wendwog. We grew up together. She was a chief's daughter. She was groomed to be the best all of her life. She wanted to be a great huntress. It would have been better if she died. The death of a friend is painful, but watching a friend become the shadow of their former self is unbearable. She doesn't think she's a shadow. Of course, she thinks she did everything right, because the second she starts to doubt herself, she'll have to face the truth. Were you just friends, or were you something more? Oh, you really don't pull any punches, do you? There was a time when I asked myself the same question. Wendwag knew me better than anyone. She understood me better than anyone. She was the first girl I ever, you know. But we never loved each other. Maybe I could have grown to love her, but it always seemed like she never understood what love was. Maybe she just wasn't capable of those types of feelings. Damn, dude. There's a lot to talk about with this guy. Uh, tell me about your people. Jesus. Mm. Imagine that in the entire world, only a few hundred like you, that not an inch of fertile ground anywhere, nowhere to grow grains for bread or cotton or linen for cloth. Your neighbors are beasts who want to eat you, or parasites who want to infect you with their larvae and then eat you. Oh, good. Okay. I think we'll cover... You know what? We'll keep we'll keep some of this for tonight. For the cozy. Yeah. Here that would be go. something we could do in the cozy stream. Who is... Indra and Pink Eye? 